We start with what was a wild week for the markets and your money. Investors buying and selling on nearly every trade headline and the markets valiantly but futilely trying to make a comeback from Monday's route. Tension in the Middle East and the growing possibility of a conflict with Iran adding to the nervousness as well. So what is the macro market telling us, if anything, Guy Dom, yes, sir. about the trade deal? And is all this volatility maybe, maybe a chance to get in or get out? First of all, great having you here. You do yeoman's work nice each haircut. morning at 5 a.m. Great Ten the hard way today, bro. Ten the hard, Ten the hard way. way. It's a five and a five. Thank I you. knew that. I play card. Listen, I'll say again, I thought the market's going lower for a while. I've been wrong. But this week, in a lot of ways, has sort of solidified my view. I think 29.40 in the S&P, and we have a great technician, Carter Worth, will tell you that's pretty good. It's a pretty decent double top. And I'll say this again. I, don't th I think we're further away from a trade deal now than we were 15 months ago when all this nonsense started. I think that's negative for the market. I think the market goes lower. But do you think the here. market has been sort of becoming callous? To all the negative headlines. Maybe, but I think that's actually makes it worse that the fact that this complacency is coming in. People think, you know doesn't what? It, doesn't it feel like, sorry, sorry to interrupt your answer, but doesn't it feel like Brexit to you? Not Brexit, really. we had all these bad headlines. I know it's 10 times bigger than Brexit, or maybe more, you can make the case. But a lot of times we're selling off on these headlines, and it's not grabbing hold of the market anymore. We've only had a couple of days to digest it, so it's probably too soon to tell. But I think is you're getting ten, to that point. Is it 10 times bigger, guy? I don't know. Than Brexit. Just, yeah. Honestly, really... the amount of dollars we're talking about, even with the next round, is still not that much on a $17 trillion but economy. It's the behavior of the elements, right, of the constituents that make up the market. The market's not important here. What's important is that it's all defense all the time, right? Since the September high, the plunge in the recovery, what's leading? Utilities, staples, REITs. What was leading this week? The same thing. What's been leading for the past 15 months since the blow off top in January of 2000? Defense. And nothing is changing that. All of the hope for beta and cyclicality in banks and industrials, it's misplaced and it's misguided. They're not working. Well, yeah, I, I, rather than trying to look at the market over the next 15 months or really where we're even going to be in three months, I would point to the things that happened this week. First of all, this is the second down week in a row uh, this year. We haven't had that, it, you know. At least it's the first four week losing streak for the Dow in three years. OK, so 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 the numbers are kind of scary. There's some big macro stats. The things I think you should be worried about um, if you look at where the Chinese yuan is. I know you're not looking that on your everyday charts, folks. But um, if you think about where there's really actually systemic risk out there, it's there. And every time we've actually seen the yuan challenge these five year lows or numerically uh, nominal terms highs, it's, it's been an issue for markets. And if you look at EM currencies, they're blowing out. If you look at emerging markets down 10 percent in seven days, that's not not a good yeah. sign. So um, these are these are factors. Yes, U.S. credit's holding in there pretty well. Um, obviously, industrials and, and the, the bifurcated market. Really, you can look at the U.S. and say everything's okay. But when this Fed's happened back in March hold. and April and June of last year, Fed's still on problem. hold, though. So, I, so I, I, I don't disagree with anything that Tim just said. But the Fed is still on hold, so money is still easy. You have no sign of inflation, no sniff, no whiff of inflation. There's still a good environment for companies to earn money. So I get that there's going to be a headwind, but we all know that headwind. Window already. But, you know, it's it's Tina, not Turner. Okay, it's there is no alternative guy. And I oh, do wonder. I do I wonder I if do we have seen. if we have seen that yield on the ten year come down the way it has. It's, does that drive people back into stocks? Because the reality is the dividend yield in the S and P five hundred is basically basically that. And risk seems still relatively low. Well, that's been true, obviously, I think, for the last seven or eight years. I mean, no question, you can't argue with that. It's been true. And I understand what Steve's saying, but I think there is inflation. This is not in the inflation the way the Fed measures it, but there's inflation in all the wrong places, not least of which asset price, price inflation. What Tim talked about with China is a big deal. And I'll take you back to August of 2015 when the Chinese devalued by February yep. of 2016. The S&P had cratered down to 1810, if we all recall, and I think most of us do. So I'm not suggesting we're on the precipice of that, but it is a big deal. So it, 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 and it pains me to say it, but Tim made a very important Whoa. and cogent point Whoa. in the show. Whoa. And if we can bring up that Whoa. yuan chart again, here's the thing. <clears throat> this Is this, the, the as we called it earlier this week on, on, on Worldwide Exchange, the soft tariff war, the, the devaluation, the market bazooka, if you will, Tim, the fact that China doesn't talk about it. You know, it's not an express action. Slap the tariffs on. But that may be a bigger threat than another 10 percent. Well, you have a dynamic here where if you read the Chinese press, they are basically saying we don't need to do anything anytime soon. And, and this is a, a different dynamic than I think uh, you've actually seen. You've seen this outspoken, hey, let's get to a place where stalemate 
begins to unfold because that's where we can do best. I, I think you have to follow bond yields, and I think ultimately that's not a good sign. So back to Tina. I know Guy's got a favorite Tina. Um, look, the, 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 the Tina for equities right now is what's the multiple you want to pay for the S&P? Because I think we've got a pretty good assessment, at least for now, where EPS is going to be. Let's call it somewhere between 165 and 170 if you want to drive a wide, uh, a wide berth. And, and you could put a 17 multiple on that and be in trouble. You could put a 19 multiple on that, which we have done during times like this, and equities have been absolutely fine. And in terms of China, which is the big thing, I mean, there is no analog to the 15, 16 stimulus. I mean, that was something that was a multiples bigger than what they're doing now. And China's already faltering. Yeah. We are not getting that tailwind. Before we move on, let me ask Grasso a direct question. If the Chinese yuan continues to fall, if it breaks 7 to 1, is there any way U.S. stocks can move higher? Uh, yes, I do think they can move higher. I think that the biggest scare Even with the yawn, for, I don't want to say collapsing, but I falling. think the biggest scare for the markets was trade, and then it segued into there's such a large gap between what we sell to them and what they sell to us that now was they were going to sell treasuries. Now that is no longer a scare because all we've seen is yields collapse. So I think we're all creating these things and they're not existing for the market as a hurdle. I, I just think also, if we've talked about the VIX a lot this week, and, and I think it's also important to talk about volatility not being where it might have been at other times during a move like this, and, and that actually this is a great time to be buying protection. Yeah. I was actually rolling down some puts today that expired, uh, and, and frankly, very happy that the vol environment by the end of this week had calmed down substantially. But are you buying other? Well, let's go around the horn and talk about what we bought today. Are you buying, Tim, other protection for the market then? Yeah, it's, it's overall protection, and it's in things that I think are highly correlated to growth or lack thereof. So um, I'm basically short small caps. I'm basically short some cyclicals. I'm basically short some semis just in case that can cover me for some names that I frankly like to own. By the way, that paid off because small caps, the S&P small cap 600 down 3% this week, the worst by far of any index. Guy Dami, did you buy anything? Healthcare. Today? Look at healthcare. You know, Tim, Power Pitch, we do a segment on this show, by the way, we call it Power Pitch. Yeah, it was United Health. That was the day they showed pitch. you wearing that uh, booger shirt. Pardon me? Gummy bear green. That's a great shirt, and I was going to wear it this evening, but tonight's only a half-hour show, and I didn't want to give our audience. I wanted them to have the full participation on Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, maybe next week. With that said, of a green UNH, screen, a floating head. UNH up significantly today. J and J up doing healthcare work. And to answer Tim's question, my favorite Tina. As you know, is Louise. Tina Louise. I mean, yeah. Grasso, did you buy anything? Yes, today? I bought packaging. I bought West Rock. I bought more West Rock this week. I, I, wound up, I wound up. No, I think it's it's been beaten down enough, and I think that it's a duopoly with them. So I do think that this stock is so under expe expected to move higher, and you get a nice yield while you wait. Olin Corp as well. I bought that for a yield Big while you wait company, as well. Yeah. Diversified chemicals. So, and I bought Actually, TSE. one of the biggest makers of ammunition for guns in America. Well, you, know? you would know that. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Big-time player. So it's been, it's been under pressure, but I, actually it's, it's been better than Westrock has, has uh, performed. But I'm buying not the leaders, the laggards in a market like this. My week was watching Decay. I started the week with a 2880, 2840 strangle, naked both sides on the S&P. Mm. Happily, it Speak English, the needle. Carter. It strangle means, and it means you're, you've sold the calls and it can kill you on the upside and you've sold the puts and you're hoping that the market closes within Carter, those Carter, things. Carter. Options, actions. It's next coming show. up. This is, a, this is a preamble. That's the next show. <laughs> Keep it preamble. Deadly. All right, it is a preamble. <laughs> we the people.